So in this video, we're going to go into more details into the calories in, calories out idea. So we know that if you eat more calories than your body needs, we gain weight, we call this a calorie surplus. If we eat less calories than our body needs, we lose weight, we call this a calorie deficit. But we're going to go into detail now. So on the screen, you're going to see some scales. So if we want fat loss to happen, we have to make the scales tip to the right where we simply expend more calories than the body needs. So there's a lot more to just eat less calories than our body needs. We're faced with all these lovely foods around us all day in, day out, never mind going out for a meal or going out for a few drinks with friends. So what we have to do is put tools in place to help us stick to this eat less calories than our body needs conversation. So you'll see the three items on the left, the three items on the right of the scales. We're gonna go into detail now on each one of them. So on the left, you'll see appetite. Now, for some of us, we have bigger appetites than other people. And sometimes the people that have a low appetite, they naturally stay um, in shape. And for some people, they have a higher appetite, which is me, which we find difficult to stay in shape. And that's probably you guys, because you're on this six weeks transformation in the first place. So there's a lot of reasons as to why you're gonna have a higher appetite, but one of them could actually be food choices. So what we have to do is be a little bit cleverer with our food choices. For example, this entire bag of lettuce is about the same calories as these three biscuits. And also this entire bag of lettuce is about the same calories as a quarter of this fruit juice. So I'm not saying you have to avoid these foods or any food in that fact, but what I am saying is you have to find some balance in between the foods that satisfy your cravings and also satisfy your appetite. So the next thing we have to consider is your environment and your social environment. And you have to consider that if you're going out for meals all the time or you're partying or you're going out drinking all the time, it's gonna be very difficult to stick to a calorie deficit in the first place. But what I'm not saying is that you don't go out or you shouldn't go out and you shouldn't eat out. What I'm saying is, again, there's some balance to be had. The next one is going to be the psychology. A lot of you have already done your why, which is great. If you haven't done that, watch one of the other videos and get that done. So you've got your goal setting sections, not burn boxed off. But a lot of the calories in is to do with your psychology and your mindset around food. So we're going to go a lot more into this section as we progress, especially with the mindfulness and the mindset stuff. But for now, just understand that it could be your mind making you eat more food than you need to. Okay, so moving on to the other side of the scales, we've got the exercise part of it. So we need to do something, but we need to do something consistently, something that you enjoy, something that you can do week in, week out. This might just be as simple as walking the dog. It might be gym training. It might be at home training. It might be a sport, but it might be some sort of activity that you enjoy, but you just need to get moving. So most of the people I'm talking to go to the gym, this section, I like to talk about uh, sustainability and sticking to it. Most people, when they think about going to the gym or doing some training, they go really high with their expectations and they'll think six days a week, they'll think seven days a week. And for most people, for the majority of people, this is just far too much, especially when you're fitting into a busy lifestyle like most of you have. So try and think of a number of times you can exercise per week that you can stick to for the long term, something that you can see yourself doing forever. So for most people, this is three or four times a week maximum. Okay, so the next part, moving down, is NEAT. This is your non-exercise thermogenesis. So the steps you do or the movement you do on a daily basis will determine this number and how many calories you burn from that. So I've already set for most people who are on my coaching to do 10K steps a day, use your phone, use a, a tracking watch. And if you can't do that, just try and move a lot more than you normally do. Walk around a bit. Some things you can do to make this easier is set some habits. These are lifelong habits you need to try and stick to. So not parking as close as you can to the supermarket. You are far capable enough to park at the other end of the supermarket, car park and walk across. It's gonna add up over a lifetime. The stairs, stop taking the goddamn lift or the escalator just walk up the stairs there's only 13 flights usually and if you can get a good um, set of stairs or you've got seven flights to climb up excellent you're going to burn more calories it's going to work for you great in the long term some other things if you sit down a lot try and stand up more but just in general just try and move a lot more now for some people when we put them into a calorie deficit 
then neat just goes down naturally. It's part of survival, it's part of um, instincts, but you don't need to know all that. All you need to know is you're gonna try and fight against that and just get moving. So do some pur pur purposeful movement, which is why tracking the 10K steps is an absolute awesome way to keep your movement up during the day. So the next one on the right is the BMR, or your basal metabolic rate. This can't be affected much by what you do or what supplements you take or whatever anybody tells you on the internet. You can't change it by much. But what we will do is go into diet breaks and hitting maintenance and making sure we're keeping our basic metabolic rate at the right level as we progress through the next six weeks. So for this fitness lifestyle, you might want to write this down somewhere. We're always, always going to be playing this game of calorie balance, day in, day out. Whether you're going out for a meal, whether you're going out for a night out, we're still playing the game of calorie balance. And if you eat more calories than your body needs, you're going to store it as fat. It doesn't matter if you do go out and eat more calories than you need. You just have to have balance throughout the month, throughout the year, to make sure that you're staying the same weight that you want to be, or you're doing weight loss if that's what your goal is. But on the flip side, we also have to make sure we're mindful to not be too obsessed over making sure that we're always in a calorie deficit. We just have to find a bit of balance. It doesn't matter if you go over a little bit. It doesn't matter if you go under too much. It's just about finding balance throughout the whole of your lifetime. So just remember this calorie balance game that we're always playing as an analogy for it. But we're going to go into a lot of tools that can make this dead, dead easy over the coming weeks.